Uh, Joe Woodard with us today. We've known Joe for over 30 years, I believe. It's been a long time. Uh, but he, way back in Goldsboro, we both lived there to, uh, together. And he was just starting his ministry out. But he lives in Phoenix, Arizona now. And he's a part of what we do and part of our um, outreach and our missions. Our missions to the United States is, is what he's a stateside missionary. And he's going to share what he does and share the gospel with us. And after service today, he's going to be sharing with our missionaries that will be going over to the West Coast the next week. And so we're excited for what Joe's going to do. Let's give it up for Joe Wood as he comes and shares the word with us today. Amen. Well, good morning, church. Uh, I told him in the first service, I said, it's been a long time. And uh, Kim, you might remember this. Uh, we had a little evangelism class in my home. You remember that? And these were my first two graduates. <laughs> I'm, just I'm glad that he see he's gone on to do a great work for the kingdom. Uh, but anyway, on a serious note, uh, you know, I've been involved in evangelism and soul winning because, you know what, it's always been important to me to find people. You know what, one of the first things I did is, as a young believer, I got excited about church. And we should get excited about church. Come on, church. We should get excited. And I signed up for everything, Pastor. I sang in the choir. Can you believe that? I sang in the choir. I was like Barney. They, like, they turned my mic off, you know. But we sang those songs that we sang in the Quaker church, Victory in Jesus and Amazing Grace. You know, some of those old hymns. And I realize everybody can't sing those songs because they don't know, not, not, not literally, but they haven't experienced Jesus. Some people don't know Amazing Grace. And you know what? And it didn't take me long to learn. I don't care what we do. There's a measure and a group of people who are outside of faith will never come to faith unless we invade. And that's not a good word. Unless we find them where they're at. And that's what I begin to do. I begin to pastor children. And matter of fact, I, I, the first time, the first ministry I really got involved in, we had vacation Bible school. We had 54 kids. Me and my wife brought 37. <laughs> I had them packed in that car. I had a pickup truck, man. I had them stacked like sardines. I said, we're going to church. And we got to church and man, we had a blast. Those kids loved it. And the pastor called me over to the side toward the end. He said, Joe, he says, you can't bring these kids back. I said, do what? All these kids lived about two miles from the church. He says, we don't have enough snacks. I said, well, put it on my tab. I was a young believer, and I'm telling you, I was heartbroken because, and I had to take these kids home one by one and say, you know what, you can't come back. The last girl I dropped off, she cried and wept. She had her first baby at 16. We missed a moment to be the church. We missed a moment to speak into a young person's life. And I, maybe it's in that moment I decided, you know what, I'm going to keep doing this, and I'm going to find somebody. Somebody's going to listen to me. So I went and bought me a little mobile podium, and I began to, go places in the, some of the worst parts of our town. And you know, if you're not coming to church, I'm coming to you. <laughs> and I'd set up shop, man, and I'd preach the gospel. And we'd have 30, 40, 50 kids to come. So I pastor street kids. And, but at the same time, I was going back and forth to Hollywood, and I saw these kids eating out of trash cans, and it just disturbed me to no end. I said, you know what, I can do something. And, and this morning, you'll have an opportunity to, to participate. We have some cars out back. And we need some people to take some cards and write a sweet note of love. Hi, my name is Sherwood. I know you're facing tough times. Be encouraged in your heart. This is not your destiny. And, and put a, and maybe a favorite scripture and put a, a $5 gift card, McDonald's, Burger King, some, something like that, fast food, uh, and seal it up and bring it back to the church. It's a $5 gift card. And people say, well, you need more than that for McDonald's. Well, listen, I asked a kid the other day, I said, what do you get with $5? He said, I get an ice cream cone and a double cheeseburger, and I do the ice cream cone first. I'm like, all right, we're good. How many of you like ice cream first? I know I do. And uh, so, but we're not really a feeding ministry. We're a soul winning ministry. And this is just a tool. This is just a method. So I want to give before they take. How many of you know what I'm talking about? My prisoners, pastor, pack. <laughs> My prisoners will hurt you. So I want to make sure I win them over before they take me down. So, uh, and that's the objective of our ministry. Cause I believe in some of the lowest places in people's lives. We can speak life into them. And, 
and, and I'm a firm believer in this, it's our job to present Christ. It's the Holy Spirit's job to reveal Christ. See, I'm not trying to talk you into something because if I can talk you into something, somebody can talk you out of something. I don't want that. I want you to have a genuine moment that you are changed and you come up and you know you're changed and it has nothing to do with me or something or somebody or it's, I want it to be the Holy Spirit. And because when you get endowed with that power, man, I'm telling you, you'll go look for a church. You'll look for ways to give. You'll look for ways. To, you'll be like, maybe what I did. You'll jump right in and say, Pastor, sign me up for this and that and everything else because you really want to see the world change. And as we do, people respond. So this morning, so I'll have to confess out of the gate in the second service, I probably have a man of a little faith. I brought 700 cards and they practically wiped us out in the first service. Okay. I got a dilemma. <laughs> I got a real dilemma. Billy went to Walmart, precious Billy, and, uh, I told him if he keeps working out, he's going to look like me. <laughs> Why are you laughing? But anyway, uh, he went and got us about 300 more, and we're going to, uh, so, but listen, this morning, I need you to take some cards. If you got two grandkids, do one for two, each of your grandkids. You got four kids, five kids. How many of you got, and sow a seed into somebody else's baby that's somewhere else? I can't tell. I got on the plane about three or four years ago and I wrote my little book. There was one seat on the plane. How many of you know when you fly southwest, if you get a seat beside you, that's your upgrade. <laughs> that's my first class. And, uh, and I saw her coming down the aisle. I said, oh, Lord, please. I held my head down. I started coughing. <laughs> you know, please don't sit here. Yeah, I'm real spiritual on the plane. But anyway. <laughs> and lo and behold, she sat beside me. And she was happy. I said, like, Lord, I got one. I don't, don't talk to me. I'm you know, <laughs> But anyway, she said, I am so happy. I said, why are you happy? She said, I found my baby. I said, what do you mean you found your baby? She said, uh, Greenville, North Carolina, I believe it was. He ran away from home four or five years ago. Went to Hollywood. She said, I finally, I hadn't seen him in five years, hadn't heard from him. And she said, someone called and says, your son's here. He wants to talk to you. He said, mom, I want to come home. Can I come home? She said, baby, I'm, I'm coming to get you. And she made arrangements. Anyway, they made arrangements and whatever. And she said, and she was, and she had, he had to finish his program. And uh, she said, I got, she said, she, I, she, she said, well, what happened in between? She said, mom, I would have never made it. She said, but I can't tell you the ministers that showed up and kept championing me to get it right. See, we don't know. We don't know what meal. We don't know what word. We don't, we don't know what you do because I can tell you the world is watching. People see what you do. They see how you act. They see how you behave. Matter of fact, I had, a, I had this made for my home recently. Not that I really needed it, but maybe I did. I, you know, wood carving, say calm. <laughs> it's part of my, normal, my devotion now, Joe, stay calm. Because I deal with a lot of irritable people. I live with a lot of people that are angry at the world. I ministered to a kid on Thursday, I believe it was, and I said, and we talked about five or 10 minutes, and I said, can I pray with you? He says, are we going to pray to this Jesus that didn't protect me when I was four years old, when I was violated at every level by every family member that I can imagine? He says, is this the guy we're praying to, or is there another person? I'm telling you, kind of back me in the corner a little bit because you hear some of these things that come out of these. You hear the abuse. You hear what people go through. And see, I got to leave them better than I found them. I knew I wasn't going to lead him to faith at that moment. I let him talk. I just nurtured his heart. I said, listen, I'm going to check up on you next week. I said, you're going to be in there? He said, yeah, I'll be around. And little by little, you have to keep loving these people into the kingdom. See, you never know what God has in store. Uh, I started going out on Sunday mornings a son before church, and I went behind this grocery store, and this, there was a couple, and I could see their feet kind of hanging, one was laying down, and one was sitting up. So I got out of the car, and I'm walking toward, I said, good morning, good morning. I had to get a little loud. He never looked up at me. I said, oh, this ain't gonna be good. I gotta figure out how to backtrack out of this one. And she woke up, and she said, oh, good morning, good morning. I said, have you got breakfast yet? I said, I got you some breakfast money. She said, oh yeah, we're so hungry. She said, but he's deaf. He can't hear and talk. I said, well, I know sign language. Good morning. I said, I'm here to share Jesus. And I went through, I'm holding the mic. I can't, I can't sign with one hand. 
<laughs> but I was able to pray with him and talk to him. I said, and he told me his story. He said, my mom and dad were deaf. He said, they never made me go to school. They were alcoholics. He said, uh, at 13, I was skip school. Not skip school. He said, when I went, I just skipped. He said, I left one day for like two or three weeks just skipping, going from house to house. He said, and I, I came home and they had packed up and left. No forwarding address at 13. Anybody here 13? Come on. Anybody 13? Stand up. Could you imagine her coming home and mom and dad's gone with no forwarding address and she can't hear and talk? He said, this is my world. I never went to school and I was never taught anything about right and wrong. This is my world. Man, to have that moment to take a knee with somebody like that, it feels like I, this is it. This is my destiny. It's not your destiny. And for me, to know, my parents were deaf, but they made me go to school. <laughs> if I didn't, I got a whipping. But anyway, that's just, <laughs> I won't go there. Uh, but my point is, these are people all around us that are hurting. So this morning, when you go out, take a card. Turn them in by June... 19th, I believe it is. That's a Wednesday night service. They'll mail them back to us. I can tell you, I'm on the fringe. I'm down to my last week or two. We see, we find 75 to 100 kids a week. Can you imagine 75 to 100 kids a week? That's how many kids we find. And it's not hard because on the West Coast, it's just more prevalent than it is here. But And we speak life into them. So this morning, uh, please be part of something like that. I want to give you an encouraging story in the Bible. And it's about this guy who heard that Jesus was teaching. And so he's, he can't get there on his own, so he convinced four of his friends. How many have you got four friends? Come on. <laughs> I got two. Uh, he, four friends, and he, he encouraged them to pick him, take him to where Jesus is at. Now, when they got to the door, they couldn't get in. Could you imagine, Sherwood, wouldn't that be an awesome problem to have? <laughs> you got to like, yeah, we can't get in. We got to come back next Sunday. No. Or you had to make an appointment to get in. I love it like a restaurant. Yeah, sit, put me down for four next Sunday. But anyway, couldn't get in. And so, and, and I could hear the guy now say, well, I, ain't, I can't take him back, man. This guy's heavy. He wore me out. And, and then the guy says, you know what? I can't leave him like this. And maybe he says, you know what? I own some property. I'll sell a little piece of land. This is where I need your imagination to kick in as a church. See, because all the time, we know what the Bible says, but sometimes you have to see what it's not saying. You have to, because there were people just like us. They will move with compassion. They had the same instincts and et cetera. So you probably said, you know what? I, I got some land I could sell. Let's cut a hole in that roof. And that guy said, well, you can't cut a hole in that roof. That's a brand new church. <laughs> That's a brand new building. And the guy says, we got to do something. We can't leave him here. But when one man's faith sparked another man's faith, he said, well, I got three billy goats. I need to get rid of them. I'll contribute. The other one probably said, well, I've been saving money for a rainy day. You know what? Let's do this. So they go up on the roof. Now, can you imagine? You're looking at me right now. I mean, I'd be looking at the ceiling right now. No, no, no. But now you're short looking. Could you imagine? All of a sudden, you hear, all of a sudden, a little light array come down, and then they would open it up. And then you see these helicopter rescues where the basket comes down. We see that a lot in Arizona where they take them off the mountain. You know, and they lay, and then what did Jesus say? Take up thy bed, your faith, your faith. You know what? I bet that man didn't have a lot of faith. His friends, his church, those around him, those who knew him, those who said, I can help, those who said, I can do something. Those, that faith coupled with his faith became faith enough for this guy to get a miracle. Come on, church. That's a good place to say amen. He got his miracle because we together banded together for the cause. Can you imagine Jesus walking out after it was all done and saying, don't worry about it, guy. I know a carpenter. <laughs> I got this. I know somebody can take care of that. And, uh, but you know what? It's the power of working together. It's the power of seeing Jesus Christ respond. I told a story early in the service, and this guy, my neighbor, he lives close to me. He walked by my patio. He saw me sitting there relaxing, drinking iced tea. <laughs> he said, I see your little car reaching runaway kids. He said, what's that all about? And I gave him the Reader Digest version because I didn't want it to be too long. And man, he got really emotional. He said, man, I don't go to church. I said, really? He said, I haven't been into a church in 72 years. 72 years. And he's 78. He said, six years old. We had a missions carnival at the church. 
My mom gave me $3. Jordan, what would that be? You're smart. What would the inflation be on that today? <laughs> but anyway, so that was probably like $100. Instead of spending money at the carnival, he wanted to buy his mom a gift to take back to his mom. He goes to the table where the pastor was manning the table and they had all the little things you could buy. And he said, I want that for my mom. So he reaches in his pocket and he plops $3 down and the pastor, the pastor, says, that's not enough, Bob. He said, but I want that for my mom, and $3 is all I have. He said, I said, Bob, that's not enough money. And he said, something came over him at six years old. He said, isn't the church supposed to give? He walked away from that table determined he would never darken the doors of a church, and he has not. 72 years he's been outside of faith. Anybody ever heard of Nevada Bob Golf Stores? He found that. He could have funded missions around the world, but the pastor wouldn't move off $2. I said this this morning. Mission is never the next trip. Mission is where you're at at the moment. I'm telling you, if you're at Walmart and you see somebody going, can't pay for their food, you see a mom at the gas station and she sends little Johnny in with $5 to get to pay for gas, that's a good time to swipe your card because $5 is only one gallon. She got three screaming kids. I was at the Waffle House. How many of you know that's a good place to, to be? I was there yesterday. Grits and eggs. Yeah, I was on it. My plant-based diet went out the window when I got to North Carolina. <laughs> he goes, what do you have? Bring it all. <laughs> but anyway, I was at a Waffle House many years ago and this, this guy was like, where's my coffee? Where's my pancakes? And man, he was ripping this girl to shreds and she, I could tell she was distraught. And she came by me and I said, oh, you're doing a wonderful job. You're doing amazing. And finally she got him satisfied. And she came, I said, what's going on? She said, my husband left me last week and he turned my lights off yesterday. I called in. She said, if I didn't come to work, I didn't have a job. I said, I'll take care of this. Went and bought her light bill, got her lights turned back on got her some food, took care of her. See, you reckon that was my mission field at the moment. I had no idea that God would use me in such a way. All I do is see a moment, an opportunity, and that's what we have to do is recognize the opportunity. When I decided I was going to work with kids, and listen, I had to be honest, I didn't like kids. I had two, and I said, I don't want no more. Don't like kids, and the Lord said, work with kids. I said, oh, no, return to cinder. Wrong delivery. That prayer didn't come from me. But you know what? God has a way of getting your heart. Because I can tell you, if you're sincere in your faith, and I believe most of you are, when you go to that place in the mornings, it's not about you. God, where are you on me? How can I add to the kingdom today? How can I make a difference? And you know what? You hear something, something gentle. You won't get this long descriptive. Go here, go there. No, you just follow me. Follow me. Follow me. I bought an old school bus from Wayne Christian. They wanted $500 for it, and I didn't have $500. But some miraculously, some lady come by my house and said, she wrote me a check for $500. I'm like, who are you? I get it now, but as a young believer, I'm like, who are you? I painted that bus with 187 cans of spray paint. Psh, psh, psh. You ought to see my neighbors riding by. A little, they said, what do you? I said, man, I'm the modern day Partridge, Partridge family. We're going to sing. We're going to dance. Man, I had all my neighbors talking. And then finally I had taking it to the streets, urban missions. You remember that, Kim? And we'd show up in these neighborhoods. Kids would give their life to Jesus. A few years ago, I was at McDonald's. One of the few times I met McDonald's. I do like their coffee. And two kids behind me said, Pastor Joe, is that you? I said, nope. They were big. <laughs> nope. And uh, they said, you don't remember us? I said, no. Pastor Joe, I'm trouble. You used to throw me out of church all the time. I said, trouble? Is that you? And he's a he like Jordan now. He's huge. It's Saturday night. I said, what you guys up to? I said, we're going to revival in Kinston. 
I said, you're still serving the Lord. He said, we've been serving the Lord ever since you left town. Wow. Wow. Seriously? Last year, Pastor, I had a bad day. And I've had a few of those. Actually, I've had a lot of those. I actually envision myself working at Trader Joe's. I go to Trader Joe's. I said, Lord, I can stock shelves. Yeah, where's the tomatoes? Right here. I got some good tomatoes right here. I mean, I, I quit. But I said, I do. I had these moments. But I had a bad day last year in November. November a year ago. November some year. I don't know what a year was. And I had honestly quit. I said, Lord, I'm 60. These kids didn't keep listening to me. I heard the Holy Spirit say, as long as you show up, they will. Okay? But I still quit. And I got home, and I had already just, re- I was done. I was just going to tell my support base, send to support somebody else, and I was going to Trader Joe's. And uh, I got a phone call. I said, Joe, there's somebody looking for you. I'm picking up. I didn't do it. <laughs> And she said, there's a girl looking for you. She said, she remembers you when you were a kid. I mean, when she was a kid, you come to her neighborhood. And her name was Elena. Elena. She wants you to call her. I didn't want to call her. But then my, everybody started calling me. Joe, you need to call this girl. She's looking for you. So I called her. I said, hey, this is Joe. You know, she said, you don't remember me. She said, you took care of my family at the lowest point of our lives. She said, you paid our light bill, you paid our water bill, you brought us groceries, you bought us school supplies. She said, and you never said one word about my mom and my dad. She said, you just kept pouring into us. She said, I'm a grown woman now. I'm 38 years old. I've gone to school and I'm an ordained minister. And they asked me where she says, where she about getting into a program to be a minister. She said, oh no, I'm going back to my neighborhood. Fairview Homes. She's already started. She gets 30 or 40 kids every Tuesday for the gospel. I quit. I got up the next morning. I said, Lord, tear up that resignation. (laughs) You see what happens? We all get weary. We all have missteps. I, I spent 30 years trying to change the world. I'm trying to change the man in the mirror now. Because I've changed, I say change, I haven't changed anybody. I've been more effective in the last five years because I've just let God be God. And you know what? I don't judge nobody. People, I hear all kinds of stuff, what people go through. I don't say, you don't believe that. Oh, surely you don't believe that. No, I say, you know what? I don't say that. I just nurture them. Because I want to leave them better off than I found them. And you can't, the guys that are going to Hollywood, you'll find us a whole different breed. There's a whole different breed. They don't understand and see and feel. They've not been churched. Sometimes I wonder where it's come from. I think, okay. Because I told the Lord, when I did my one mission trip for God, I say this all the time, I check my box for God. Anybody ever done that besides me? Gotcha. Come back and visit me in five years. No, actually, I told the Lord, I said, come back when I'm 45. My house will be paid for. My kids will be through college. And then I'll negotiate. Am I the only one who talks to God that way? Or y'all, y'all just too spiritual for me. I said, I said, come and we'll we'll talk about it later on. It happened that way. And now one of my missionary journeys to LA, uh, it was one of my, I could tell a thousand stories in that trail, but this is the one I want to tell you. The, the guy said, hey, y'all want to go to Jack Hayford's church? Some of you older people remember Jack Hayford. He was in California. Was a, man, this guy can teach the Word of God, just rightly divide it. Man, I was, he said, we're going to his church Sunday morning. I said, yippee, happy. And the guy showed up on a little Toyota Corolla. There was six of us, seven counting him. We were already in violation. This was before the seatbelt. Oh, we crammed in that little Toyota. He said, change your plans. Oh. He says, we're going to a church off Sunset Boulevard, the Michael Jackson Auditorium. I was disappointed. I wanted to go hear Jack Hayford. I walked in and we turned down that street off Sunset and big auditorium, no cars. This ain't good. We're we're early, I think, I hope. Walked in and I got greeted by the pastor, my first holy kiss. And he took me, he sat me down. He said, I need you to start stamping tracks. He said, 50 and 50 stacks. 
I said, God, what have I signed up for? If I ever get back on that plane, I'm going home. And we got ready, and there was about six or eight of us Christians, maybe ten. All of a sudden, people started coming in from the streets. It filled up with about 40 kids. I was on the back row. I'm like, I, I, if I need to slip out, I'll slip out. And the pastor was a one-man show. He would do the projector, the announcements, and whatever. And then instead of the sermon, he opened up the floor to the kids. And the kids, one girl, the first girl to stand up, her dress was so short, I had to turn my head down. She'd been on the streets all night long. And she stood there and she started telling, she said, I'm sick of this life. I keep, keep living like this. She said, but if I come out, they will kill me. And I trust me, I've been in Hollywood 35 years. They will kill you. And she asked that we pray for her. So us nine or 10 Christians got up and got around her and all the 30 or 40 kids and we prayed over her. Yeah, the unbelievers prayed over her. She had that track in her hand. He said, how'd you find out about this place? She said, somebody told me if I could come here, I could find unconditional love. And little by little, for about 45 or 50 minutes, these kids kept standing up, giving their testimony. And, and one of the last ones I remember was a gang member stood up and said, my brother died last week. He kept asking me, he said, what's this Jesus stuff you're into? And he says, I didn't have the nerve to tell him. Only the week later to find he'd been shot by a rival gang. He died. And so little by little, and I came home from that. I tried to hit my delete button. You can't. You can't walk away from that. You got to see, you just believe names are being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I quit trying to figure it out. I can't figure it out. I just know if I show up, they'll listen because there ain't nobody competing with me. I ain't had nobody say, get away from these people. They're my parishioners. <laughs> you know why? They're in the liability column. They're not in it. They don't bring nothing to the table. If anything, they will steal the table. You know what I'm saying? They take. But you know what? It's in that moment. See, when you give these cards, not only is it a, a, a small token of a meal, but you're buying me life insurance. It's allowing me to speak Christ into their heart. Um, one of the kids, I, I don't know how much time I got, but it don't matter. Um, I met Edith and uh, Fabian a couple weeks ago. Fabian was in a bad way. He was strung out when I saw him. And I could have said, you, you just a low life. Anyway, when you snap out of it, I don't do nothing like that. I said, Fabian, what's going on? After he told me his name, I said, started encouraging him. I said, can I pray with you? He said, yeah, but I could tell he was spaced out. And when, as a matter of fact, when I came back through, he was laid out. I said, well, I probably just wasted five bucks there. And then another week passed. I saw him and his wife together. He said, hey, babe, this is the preacher. Come, come. And she came over and said, oh, thank you. And he still had his card. This is a week later. How many of you, if you're homeless, you're going to hang on to a card? Okay, you're down to a duffel bag and you got, you're hanging on to a card. And then another three, uh, two, a week passed and I saw him at a bus stop. And man, we had a great time. We prayed. There were some other kids there. We just had like a little revival at the bus stop. And then on a Sunday morning, I went through this park and there they were. And I'm telling you, Jordan, her face was radiant. To the point, I'm like, what happened to you? They said, Pastor Joe, we gave our heart to Jesus last Saturday night. I'm like, what? You didn't let me do that? I should lead you in a prayer, not them. They, didn't, they got nothing invested in this. I don't work. I so know. He said, I said, you're kidding me. I'm telling you, they were glowing. Him and her both. I mean, they were sober. A little girl, seven years old, she's got brain cancer. And they just pushed him back over the edge. He said, she doesn't deserve this. We should deserve this. And we prayed and they got jobs and they got bicycles to get back and forth to work. And I'm thinking, hallelujah. See, I don't know which French fry did it. I don't know which swipe of the cone got it. I don't know which cheeseburger just keep giving and keep giving because I'm going to be opposite of the pastor of Bob. I'm going to give everything I got because you know what? I ain't taking on to nothing in this world. Not that I don't want nothing. I got me some new shoes last week, but I like, but I'm just saying for the most part, it don't matter to me. I'm trying to get people to Jesus. I'm trying to leave people better off than I found them. 
And we all have that ability. And I said it earlier in this service, wherever you're at at the moment is your mission field. Don't miss that moment. Don't miss that moment. 1992, when the riots took place, Rodney King got drug out of that truck. Well, I wasn't there when he got drug out, but I was in, I was in this city. I was off Sunset and Western. You could still see the smoldering coming up. And the guy came up to me and he dropped me off. They had dropped me off with another young Christian. They take these young believers from North Carolina and drop them off in the worst parts of town because they don't know no better. <laughs> so like, yeah, send the country boy over there. <laughs> if he comes out of that, he's a man of God. <laughs> and boy, I'm telling you, I had no clue where I was at. Like, hey, y'all. You know, I don't laugh too much. And I said, hey, y'all. My accent was worse back then. Kind of like Sherwood, you know? <laughs> I'm just messing with you. And uh, he come up to me and said, you need to move on, boy. And I said, you got to tell me twice. You were here before I was. I mean, this is in my head. He said, he come back the second time. He said, I told you to move on. Now, I've got a two-year-old and a five-year-old home. I didn't want to go home in a body bag. So for you guys going to Hollywood next week, it won't be nothing like this. This is back in the day. And, uh, uh, and he showed me his gun, and he said, ratty, tap, tap. Well, I understand tongues pretty good. <laughs> you got me. I mean, I could have outrun a marathon runner at that point. That bullet couldn't have caught me. <laughs> He'd be like the road runner. But anyway, but then I heard the Holy Spirit say both times, don't move. He walked off about as far as from here to 20 feet away or 30 feet away. He turned around. He looked. He turned around and walked off. I don't know if he was blinded. Holy Spirit did something. And I thought about Daniel and the lion's den. I'm like, dude, did they not even see Daniel? I mean, we don't know. I'm like, Daniel, did you not know? Those lions had real teeth. He goes like, Joe, do you not know those guns had real bullets? We don't know. God has a way of protecting you in the moment. In the moment. Now listen, I'm not a superhero. I'm just like you and I. I don't wake up in the morning greasy. Yes, Lord. I need coffee, lots of coffee. And I'm like, Lord, can I not go today? But no, I go. Because once I go, I find someone that says, if it hadn't been for you, today I was going to commit suicide. Today was my last day alive. I'm like, are you serious? Your last? Yeah, I can't take this anymore. Because the abuse. You, go, you come to church twice a week, three times a week. You listen to Christian music. You dance, sing in your car at home. And you still miss the boat sometimes. These people have nobody safety net you have to believe do you believe church can I tell one more story thank you Sean <laughs> I told this story here many years ago but I tell you it's a powerful thing this happened probably 15 years ago I had gone to the west side of town and I was further 35 miles away from where I normally minister at and I can't tell you God said Joe go left go right Called 300 yards, no, no, nothing. I just kept driving like, why am I over here? Why am I over here? I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. And I went by this abandoned hotel and I saw this kid outside turning the bicycle. Y'all remember this story? He, had this, he was trying to keep the chain on his bicycle. All you little boys know all about that, right? Couldn't keep the chain on. He was living in an abandoned hotel. I got out and I was trying to talk about Jesus. He was probably 13, 14 years old. And I was trying to share Jesus. He wouldn't give me the time of day. I said, you little mean snake. I didn't say that. I said, Lord, and, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, buy him a bicycle. I'm like, okay, Lord, we don't mind giving a $5 gift card, but a bicycle is out of my range. Buy him a bicycle. No. Uh, yes. I said, I'll be back in a minute. I said, will you be here? And, and his mom came out. Well, she was a lady at the night. How many of you are with me when I say that? I mean, no windows in this abandoned hotel. No, no image. So I went down to Kmart. I need to speed up. I feel myself slowing down. I'm going, I'm going Quaker on you. <laughs> uh, I went to Kmart and I bought like $150 bicycle. It was a nice one. Because once I got there, I said, oh, yeah, give me the best one you got. I took that bicycle. 
I got it out of the back of the truck and I set it down. That kid jumping on that bicycle, I have not seen him to this day. He was gone. I'm like, he didn't even say thank you. His mother began to weep and cry. She said, you don't understand what you just did. I said, what did I just do besides spend $150 for a bicycle? I didn't say that. That's my head talking. She said, Mom, we keep getting into this place. You keep telling us Jesus is going to get us out of this place. He says, he rides his bike. He's a great student. He rides his bike to a high-end neighborhood, chains it up behind a bush. He gets on the bus with all the high-end kids. But in the afternoon, he takes his bike and goes back. So he couldn't go to school if his chain didn't stay on. He said, if your Jesus is real, tell him I need a bicycle today. Today. He got a bicycle that day. How many of you know he's a believer probably today? Because it's something you did in the moment. I can't take credit for that. I was I didn't want to do it. See, sometimes you gotta be like this man. You know what? I'll pay for the roof. I'll skip a meal to ride a car. I'll give a little extra to the church building fund, Southeastern School. You do something extra because you can. And it's us, the church, the church, the church of Jesus Christ coming together that we all are doing this so that people would know Jesus Christ. Amen? Come on, church. We can do better than that. Amen? Listen. So this morning, if you go back and there's not enough cars, we're going, we'll send some more next week, this week, if we need to send some more, if we don't have enough. And you can pick some up next Sunday. But I can assure you, I'm your spiritual postman. I mean, you know, when you put them, when you put your mail in the mailbox, you believe the postman's gonna get it there, right? Especially if you show out bill, you're like, I sure hope he gets that there. We're gonna find somebody that needs your meal and needs your words of encouragement. Amen. I want to pray for you, Father. We just thank you for this moment. I want to thank you, Lord, not just for the participation, but to share our heart to win souls, to share our heart to make a difference today, Lord. I believe there's five, there's someone in this house that says, you know what? I'm gonna do something locally in Shalot. Somehow I'm going to do something in this community even more to make a difference. Some of my greatest decisions for Jesus Christ has not been at the altar. It's what I did on Monday morning driving to work or Wednesday when I heard that word and I was challenged in my heart and I said, you know what, I can do something. Because my side says, I'm going to just write a check and send him on. But God may want me to do something different through you. He may, 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 may be want you to be boots on the ground look people in the eye, give them that touch and just see the miracle that can take place when you say, yes, Lord. So if that's you this morning, would you just slip up your hand at you? We're just going to do a better job of letting our light shine. Listen, I didn't even call you to the mission field. I just said we're just going to let our light shine. We're not going to miss a moment to reflect Jesus in every opportunity. Father, we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. stand if you will thank you for being here today hey, how many uh, we've got a group that's going to uh, to Hollywood are you guys how many of you guys are here if you're going can, come up here and stand up here at the front we're going to we're going to pray over you guys so if you kind of can get behind them I'll pray from up here and um, it's probably not everybody but it's some of them we've got a, a, a group they'll be going y'all leaving next Sunday at two o'clock in the morning. So we'll we'll pray over that. But here's some of these guys and they're going to uh they can go next week. So they'll be there, they'll leave. So they won't be here next Sunday. Uh here comes Pastor Ryan, he's he's going with them as well. And uh, uh part of the Oasis ministry to be staying at uh the Dream Center. Many, many of you might have heard about that or you have but you 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 can go online and see that awesome ministry. Uh, the Radikis who come, they were here uh, a couple of months ago and, and, and sharing. Since COVID, we haven't sent a team out there. Uh, so this is our first team in, in a while. And so obviously Joe will be there three or four days at, at least with them. And uh, so we're going to, 
uh, pray over them. So I want you to stretch your hands this way. And we're going to, I know you can't go, but we're just going to believe that God's going to, going to be with them. So, Father, we just thank you um, for every one of these that's going to be out and going to places. They're going to come back with stories just like Joe did. And, um, and Lord, we just ask you, God, to, to be with them. We pray for divine appointments for every single one of them. God, you've opened the door. And we want to walk through the doors, God, that you've opened. And we know the door that you've opened that no man can close. And just like Joe, Lord, he, he shared going back 30, almost 40 years ago, Lord, just, 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 just encounters that completely changed his life. And I know, Lord, that they're going to change people's lives, and that's the reason why they're doing. But I want their lives to be changed as well. Lord, I want you to change them. I want you to use them. I want you to anoint them. I want you to protect them. I apply your blood over them. Uh, not only while they're there, but in their travels. Whether it be a plane, Lord, by car, by bus, and all the different ways they've been going, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, you're going to be with them. But most important, Lord, I just believe, Lord, that eternity is going to be changed because of what they're doing. Because of the uh, decision they're making, Lord, just to say yes. And I just pray, Lord, that you be with them. Um, we just know, Lord, that even those of us that are here that, that cannot go with them, but, Lord, we can send them. And we thank you for the anointing to serve this house. We thank you for the gospel that, that proceeds out of this house. And as we send them, Lord, we, we pray the same covering that's over them uh, here will be over them out in the streets, Lord, and the buildings and the, under the bridges and in the canals and everywhere, Lord, that you would lead them, Lord. We pray, to God, that, that you're just given words to say, Lord, and, and have a heart, Lord, for each and every person they're going to encounter. We just release it now in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Give these guys a hand clap of praise for whenever they go. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining us today. We are so glad to connect with you. If you are new to HP and want to get more involved, I invite you to text 910-501-2005. Or you can download our church app and stay up to date on everything going on around here. I also want to tell you three ways you can give today. You can give through text. Text any amount to 84321. If you've never set that up, it only takes a moment. You can give right through your phone at any time. Second, you can give online through our website. Go to highestpraisechurch.com and click the giving tab. You can give right there online. Finally, you can give through mail. You can send in your gift to P.O. Box 1189, Shalote, North Carolina, 28459. And if you're looking for a way to plug in, to serve, or be a part of what's going on here at Highest Praise, join us for our next step class. It's the first Sunday of every month at 9 a.m. We are so glad you joined us today. God is not done with your life. If you need prayer, have any questions, you can reach us through social media or you can call our office at 910-754-4809. We love you, highest praise, and the best is now.